Okay. Hello, everyone. Like I promised, we are going to do a video about the staffing shortages at the MTA. And I'm also in this same video going to talk about my reaction to the new service on the Long Island Railroad to the new Grand Central Madison beginning in December. And we are going to read an article from Channel 1 regarding that. And we're also going to read an article, yes, from Channel 1 regarding Grand Central Madison as well. And then I'll go into more of these specifics. But I am very glad that Jose Martinez did write an article yesterday in the city regarding this. Because I knew there was something from Jose regarding this last night. Even though I really didn't bring it up in the crime update. And, uh, you know, I I'm not even going to talk about the crime this weekend. You know, all I'm just going to say is thank goodness they caught that guy in the Bronx who raped the woman. You know, justice is starting to be somewhat served nowadays. And let's just hope that the strength continues. But I do not have the time or the patience to talk about it this weekend. Instead, I want to focus on this. I want to get Andy plays out to you guys this weekend. And, of course, tomorrow we're going to put up my predictions for WWE Hell in a Cell, which I have a very important programming note for Peacock. So stay tuned for that video tomorrow. I'll bring it up immediately in the beginning. So it has something to do with the Yankees and the Mets. So stay tuned for that announcement tomorrow. But let's talk about the staffing shortages. So... Basically, it says here, look at this. I mean, one guy had to come out of retirement. 11 train operators, 12 conductors, and 10 train service supersizers for staffing shortages. So there you go. Look at this. The MTA is trying to offer $35,000. For people that are, of course, not in the MTA payroll anymore. Yep. So believe me, they are, they are that desperate here. So we'll we'll get to the Staten Island Railway article from Channel One in just a second. But I want to read this specific part, and let's see if I can draw it. Yeah, let's see. I want to read this part. So follow along with me. Right over here, so shouldn't take that long to completely draw it. That way you can read it. And almost there. Perfect. Okay. So read along with me in this part. In April of 2022, crew shortages were to blame for 5,398 delays. MTA numbers show the month per most per month since January of this year, when there were 6,353 delays. That's significantly down from December of 2021. There were 13,282. So remember, as I board up to the MTA board back in November of 2021, these staffing shortages impacted my birthday last year. So trust me, it made my birthday a little bit hectic, but at least I made the most out of it. Okay, so let's uh, continue here. Look at this. They're trying to offer job openings across the board, outpacing the number of people seeking employment. I will mention that the unemployment rate did come out today, and it did stay steady. But remember, we are on the verge of a recession because of the inflation getting out of hand. So keep that in mind. So it says here that the MTA has been forced to push back its timetable for pre-pandemic pre-pandemic staffing levels until early 2023 and for conductors until the end of this year. Hiring for bus drivers remains on pace. So, um, I will give an example of bus operator availability issues. We have the College Point Depot facing numerous issues. And I still do not get why the 1.40 p.m. bus on the QM5 is leaving late lately. You know, that's not really acceptable. 
This driver is just playing games. I, I know who he is. He's playing games. He doesn't realize the people have schedules. You know, it's not really fair. You know? I mean, he's doing a good job driving, don't get me wrong. It's just that, you know, you gotta leave on time. You know, start boarding passengers five minutes early at 6th Avenue and West 36th Street. That's not too much to ask. Leave at 140. That's all we're asking. Shouldn't take that long to get up 6th Avenue and picking us up at Bryant Park. Okay, so I don't even want to read what Lieber is saying. You know, it's, it's not even... You know, Ugh. so obviously I don't even want to read any more of this. But you get the idea. So now let's talk about the Staten Island Railway. Once again, for my viewers in Staten Island, you know, you guys really shouldn't have to deal with this nonsense. But I guess because you're in a hurry to get to the ferry at St. George's Terminal. You guys get screwed over there. So look at this. Happened on Thursday morning. The 718 bound train for crate kills and the 7.51 a.m. train to St. George's Ferry Terminal were canceled. So it says that new locomotive engineers are still working to come on, but they have several more weeks of training. So there you go. I mean, what else is new? So let's move to the positive side of things. Now let's get into these uh, new timetables for Grand Central Madison. So here's what the overall look according to Channel 1 says right here. So it says that 274 trains per weekday, which will be a 41% service uptick from the current 665 to 939 trains per weekday. This is the largest service increase in Long Island Railroad history. So, uh, obviously, we know from what the president of Regional Rail, Kathy Rinaldi, said. I'm not even going to call her president of both. I'm just going to call her president of Regional Rail Operations. So, let's read this. Uh, keep in mind, you got the third track project which um for once it seems pat foy listened to me while he was still chairman i can't believe i'm actually saying that everybody remembers when i spoke to pat foy in person back in july 2019 everybody remembers everybody remembers when i in fact made sure to tell pat foy we had a 2023 completion date. This is what leads up to it. By having the Grand Central Madison project open in December, looks like we are definitely on time. Despite a global pandemic that caused financial constraints, we thankfully did get help from the federal government, which... Okay, it may have caused the inflation to get a little bit out of hand. But imagine if we never got this federal funding. I don't think Grand Central Madison would have ever happened. So, look at this. We got, um, 44 morning rush hour peak direction trains. Long Island Railroad is also providing 60 additional afternoon peak direction rush hour trains, increasing the number of trains from 98 to 158. Penn Station will also add three Long Island Railroad trains during the afternoon rush, going from 63 to 66. Long Island Railroad is also planning to add 53 reverse peak trains per weekday and increase at 65% from 81 trains to 134. So, there are going to be some virtual information uh, sessions that they are planning to uh, hold. So what we're going to do right now is just go on Google and we're going to see what comes up. So this is what comes up when you Google GCT. So here we go. 
This is the website, Grand Central Madison, right here. So, it's easier just to Google it. So, it says here that, uh, this is what I want to look for. So, this is going to run alongside Madison Avenue from 43rd Street to 48th Street. But, they also don't mention that there is going to be a 42nd Street exit to Vanderbilt Avenue. So if you need direct access to 42nd Street direct inside Grand Central, they did plan that out from what I saw in person on Tuesday. So let's see. We have retail and restaurants, free Wi-Fi, departure information. Uh, MTA expects 45% of Long Island Railroad passengers to use this new service to Grand Central, which again... I am very happy about because if I'm still stuck in New York, based on the current real uh, real estate trends with the inflation kicking in with the interest rates, I don't know how real estate's going to look in Delaware. That's a given. So let's see. Um, let's see what we got. Yes. Yeah, so this is the virtual sessions that they are planning to hold. Oh, this looks ugly. That's better. Okay, so they're holding a couple information sessions, and I am not going to be joining them because I really do not see the point in joining them. I really do not. No. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Yes, here we go. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Virtual public meeting will be offered on Wednesday, July 13th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. All right, then. I mean, maybe I can join the June 23rd session on LTE while I'm on the road, but... Ugh. So, what I want to do is take a look at um, a couple of the schedules that would impact me so let's take a look at the babylon branch first i'm going to take a look at service to limbrook so let's see i want to see how this is going to be impacted okay i don't see anything going to babylon that's going to be the problem i am looking for the am okay let's see 11.30 a.m. Okay, so is this going to be the train that goes to the Babylon? No, it won't. Okay, okay. Okay, this is interesting. I think they're moving this train to 11.49 a.m. Oh, boy, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, see, now they want to move this to 10.49, which is going to be a problem if I need to get east on the Babylon branch. I mean, really. I mean, the only thing I would like to ask is, you know, coordinate with Nice Bus. You know, make sure that you tell Nice Bus to link up with the N25 route. Because that's going to be a problem right there. I mean, 1149? Really? Okay, then I want to see if I can look at the Babylon branch, so... Let's take a look at the Babylon branch. So I'm just going to go with the 11.49 a.m. Let's see if I can find to Babylon. Okay, here we go. So I'm assuming this is going to be the train. Yes, 11.09. So you're looking at... Hang on here. Hang on here. Hang on. So wait, 11.30... Th this train's going to... Hang on, let me see something. Let me open up both. Okay, here we go. Now I'll make this a lot easier. Okay, here's Limbrook. Here's to Limbrook. Hang on here. 10.52 a.m. Wait a minute. Right, 11.49, correct. So let's take a look at the 11.13 a.m. departure from Grand Central. Just going to look for a second. Let's see. Okay, so now this gets a lot easier. 
So I'm looking at it, and it says that, again, this train will be arriving at Grand Central. Here's Jamaica. And yes, okay, now it gets a lot simpler. Okay, so they did add Limbrook. I'm like, wait a minute, where's Limbrook? Because how are you supposed to make those local trips on the Babylon branch? So if I don't leave Long Island Jewish in a reasonable time, that's going to be a problem right there. So this is going to be interesting. You have this train departing Grand Central? Really? Really? All right, so I just want to look at Hicksville for an example. So let me look at the main line. Let's see New Hyde Park. That's what I want to look through. So let's see what they got for New Hyde Park in the off-peak. Because, again, I'm just focused on that. And then we're going to wrap it up and look at the... Uh, look at the Port Washington branch to wrap this up. Okay, this is eastbound to Hicksville. Okay, there we go. Now this gets a lot easier. Okay. So let's see what time the train goes to New Hyde Park. Okay, good. So they're not going to touch the 1110 departure. But it looks like this train will be originating at Grand Central. So that's the good news at least. Yep, that's definitely going to go to Jamaica. Then go to New Hyde Park. So if I want to go to Hicksville for an example, at least the good news is I'll still get to Hicksville. At 11.26. But I don't think they're going to add local stops on the Ronkonkoma. No. Because if you add those you add those stops on the Ronkonkoma branch. Trust me. You don't want to make people angry. That they have to make local stops to accommodate extra passengers. I mean. That's going to make a lot of people very angry. Alright. You can't do that. So at least the good news is. They're basing it on... Yeah, it looks like Ron Konkuma is going to get half hourly. That's a it, it's about time. I mean, they're just assuming this is going to be part of the third track. So, it, you really cannot make this stuff up. You really can't. So, lastly, let's take a look at the Port Washington branch. This is what I want to look at. So the good news is Auburndale's finally getting half hourly off peak on weekdays, which again, everybody in the Auburndale community, including my employees at Osnum Hall, were wondering because of this project, are we finally going to get the half hourly? And it sounds like yes. So that's very good news. Especially because Osnum is trying to hire extra staff. So, um, I will be mentioning this to any new recruits at June, June 15th. Again, we are holding a hiring event from 10 a.m. to 6 that day. So, come on out to Osnum if you are interested. We really need staff. We are that desperate. But, this is going to be one of the incentives that will convince people to come from Manhattan now. Because now you can either leave from Penn Station or you can leave from Grand Central. So that's the good news. And it looks like on the peak, Grand Central is going to be having half hourly service. So this makes sense. Now, on the afternoon peak, how is that going to look? Is Grand Central going to have half hourly on the... No, it's only going to be the morning. Okay. Okay, I, I was just curious. But yeah, that's very good news. Now, in terms of my trains, now, what they want to do, and especially because I'm looking for to New York, now, the good news is... Hang on here. Oh, I saw something different yesterday. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Ooh. Yeah, I barely would make the cut. 
But, you know, I don't mind waiting till 11. You know what it is? Because then I can get my errands done in Auburndale. Or I can just go to Bayside. And then take the 1057 departure. I would just have to plan it out. But. Uh, things just get so complicated. Now let's see if we can pull up the eastbound schedules. Now the good news is the 217 departure from Penn will not be touched. So. I would like to go to Grand Central. You know, I would like to have that access. So it makes things a little bit easier in terms of how I could plan it out in theory. So, I would just really have to be careful here. Because this would be very interesting. There's no question about that. But... Again, these are only drafts. You know, I'm not really going to complain about it as much. But I would again like to mention that if you're going to have connections from the N25, reach out to Nice Bus and let them know about it because I will be addressing that with the MTA coming up in July. So, oops, don't want to do that. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this video for today. I mean, I made my points very clear. How I feel about staff shortages and then this new Grand Central Madison schedule. And, you know, it's about time that we finally have direct service to Grand Central. It's been long overdue. And, you know, I'm very happy about it. There's no question. But the only thing I want to note on the Hempstead line to wrap this up. I want to... Um, yeah, here we go. I want to look up Queens Village. Hang on. I know Charlton's going to wonder how Queens Village is going to be impacted. Hollis and Queens Village will see a 22% increase in rush hour service with 11 trains. One train each morning and evening going to Brooklyn. Okay, so that's the good news. Let me move this so that you all can read it. Here we go. Right, and they're just assuming when UBS Arena becomes full-time, trains will run hourly to Grand Central Terminal. Okay, this is interesting. All right. So how's this going to work out? You see, that's the problem. <clears throat> Hang on. I want to see City Terminal for an example. How many trains are going to be running to Grand Central? Because I'm better off maybe going to Jamaica. On the off-peak. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I want to look at City Terminal, so Because remember, on MTA Prodigy's channel, I am technically the ambassador for City Terminal. So let's see how this works out. To New York. How are we looking in the off-peak? How much service will Jamaica be getting to Grand Central? Wow, this is some good news. It looks like Jamaica's going to be getting a lot of frequent service during the peak. But what about the off-peak? Let's see... Okay, it looks like Jamaica is going to be getting service to Grand Central every, I would say... Okay, that's not that bad. It's going to be every half hour. Okay, so maybe I can take the Q31 from Bayside. I wouldn't mind. But what about Woodside? How's Woodside looking? Because I can always change at Woodside. If I take the 1029 train. How much is they going to get? Which side will be getting every... Okay, good. So what side will be getting every half hour? So that's the good news. So what I want to do now is look at... Yeah, let me see. MTA 
L-I-R-R-G-C-T. That's how we're going to wrap up this video, I promise. So, let's compare it with the Port Washington branch. What time would that train get to Woodside? Because I'm thinking you should have every right to change for service to Grand Central. I mean, the, the conductors are probably going to have to start mentioning that change here at Woodside for the train to Grand Central. Because I'd rather would have that option on the PWB. So let's see if my 1029, for an example, what time would that get to Woodside? I'm looking at it right now. Because I know this is the 1008 departure. This would get to Auburndale at 1028. This would get to Woodside at 1044. So what time would that train get to Woodside? Okay, this is not that bad. I think. Yes, because remember, you get to Penn get here. And then you just have to wait 20 minutes, which honestly, it's not that bad. It, it could be worse. Yes, see, 1044. That's the Port Washington train. So then you just change at Woodside at 11.03. Which, again, what would be the better option? Waiting for the 11 a.m. train? I mean, it really wouldn't be worth it. Unless, hang on, are they macing it on that? No, exactly. Wouldn't make any sense, see? See? 11.16... Right. Hang on here. See? So in theory, it really doesn't make any sense. Now that I think of it. So you're better off waiting for the 11 a.m. train. In theory. So, yeah, at least I could take care of my errands. I just wanted to research that. Okay, so now we're going to wrap this up. I think we're done here. So thank you all for watching. And I'll leave the link in the description below for this. So that's it. Thank you for watching.